I think I'm going to be only on props in this game because it doesn't feel like either side is very trustworthy in this one. Maybe the Chargers go off and maybe we have been buying low on this team that I'll admit it, they had a stretch there where they had to go against some really good defenses. So you look at those games against the Chiefs and the Cowboys and maybe you don't take away too much from that. But this is a good defense too. The Jets have stayed in games and won games probably solely because of that defense. It's not because they're lighting up the scoreboard. Also, they're getting three and a half points at home here, and it's also a very long trip uh, to the East Coast for the LA Chargers here, having to go all the way to New, jo uh, New York or New Jersey or whatever that damn stadium is actually located in. Uh, so a side is not going to be the play for me. I then I'm going to go look at some player props here, and I'm looking at the passing game for the New York Jets because based on the matchup, the LA Chargers have given up the most passing yards per game of any team in the NFL. So I know it can mm -hmm. be tricky trusting Zach Wilson, but if there's ever a spot for him to at least, um, you know, throw for some yards here, it's against this Chargers secondary. So I'm going to look at two players. Number one, a really low number on Brees Hall tonight. It is 18, or excuse me, 17 and a half. So I'll hit the over on Brees Hall's receiving prop. He's coming off a game where he had 76 receiving yards against the Giants. Granted, that was in overtime. He got a few more targets there, but still had nine targets on the day, and his targets have gone up. He had five targets in the receiving game against the Eagles as well and finished with 54 receiving yards there. So I like the upside for Brees Hall in the receiving game against the Chargers. Next up, we're going to go with uh, Garrett Wilson, who looked to be having a, a great season before Aaron Rodgers went down. I thought it was going to be a breakout year for him. Uh, I still think he's one of the better receivers or one of the better young receivers in the game. I'll go over his receiving prop of 66 and a half. It feels like a low number for somebody who's coming off a 100-yard game against the Giants. Again, talking about targets there. He's had at least 10 targets in three of his last games, and he's finished with at least 60 receiving yards in three of his last four games. And plus, the matchup is nice. Like I said, the secondary for the Chargers is beatable. Their run game or their run defense is actually pretty solid, so I think it's kind of a pass-funneling defense. Let's go Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall over the receiving props. Oh, okay, very good. I am, let me make the case for the Jets here. Am I going to bet the Jets? No. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll make a case for the under instead. I really think the under is going to hit. It's come down again from 40. I might just play it at 40, lay a touch of juice. But I'm thinking about how this game is going to, going to go down. And if you're the Jets, it's pretty simple. With Zach Wilson, a quarterback, look, he is who he is at this point, right? He's gotten better. He's not as punitive as he used to be as a starting quarterback. But he's not, not going to be a guy who's going to go out and sling it around and win you football games. You do not want him doing this. However, the Chargers do have the worst passing defense in all the NFL. So if there's any spot where maybe Zach Wilson can have some sort of sustained success, maybe this is it. But ultimately, the Jets are going to play football the way they have been playing football during this three-game winning streak, which is let's hand the ball off to Brees Hall. Let's get Zach Wilson in manageable situations. Let's slowly make our way down the field. Let's hold on to the football. And then let's win the game with our defense because we're not going to have to score that many points if our defense holds. And here's one thing I mentioned earlier, which I think bears repeating. How good are the Chargers, really? At three and four, you're saying, well, they're not that good. They're three and four. I, yes, I understand that. But what I'm saying is even in their three wins, Chelsea, they beat the Raiders early in the season with Aiden O'Connell and Josh McDaniels, and they beat Tyson Bajan and the Bears. So even their wins, and they beat the Vikings early in the year, they really don't have a great win on the ledger. So having to go all the way across the country and take on the Jets and a team that is playing good football right now, I, I think the hook is the difference here. So I'm on New York. Listen. Cool your Jets. We'll give you some picks in about a week. I need to see some of these teams, I don't know, involved in a few games. But here is my other advice going forward for the college basketball season. I say you pick one or two conferences and you stay there. Because I think the mm -hmm. toughest part about college basketball is looking at the slate and seeing, what, 100 games? 
Like literally, there are hundreds of games on the slate when it comes to some of these big days of the week where everybody is playing. The more you specialize and the more you narrow the field, I think the sharper you can be because nobody's going to be able to know everything about every single team. So you pick a conference and you follow that conference all season long, and that way you can kind of have a better handle on what's going on uh, when it comes to those teams. Once March Madness rolls around, that's when you can start looking at all the teams and say, okay, I really got to start studying. But in the meantime, I think I'll be looking at like maybe one or two conferences. No, I hear that. I went through yesterday and tried to look at some futures here for each individual conference. I'll give you one more national title pick that I do like at least right now because you can get it at 16 to 1, and it's Michigan State just because – First of all, you can never go wrong with a tried and true head coach like Tom Izzo, right? Number two, they have an awesome backcourt. We know A.J. Hoggard, Tyson Walker are going to be there. So that backcourt is as good as any in the country. And what I was reading about yesterday, which I I think is interesting, is that generally the way Izzo recruits is he'll get some big-name recruits, no question. But his his history is to take these, these Midwestern guys who are very talented and sort of mold them over three or four years, these blue-collar basketball guys. But in addition to Hoggard and Walker, he also has a huge recruiting class with four four-star recruits coming in. That is not necessarily the way Michigan State always does things. So if he can take that young talent and mold it with the guys already in the backcourt and you have a Hall of Fame head coach, Michigan State at 16-1 to win the national title I do think is interesting. I do think and I do wonder if that's going to be a storyline and a betting angle from here on out is betting on a team based on the coach. Because in years past, it is rung true. There is a reason that you see Tom Izzo year in and year out in the Mm -hmm. final four and at least the sweet sweet 16 because coaching does matter. So, Jenks, who is your Monday MVP? Got to give it to C.J. Stroud, baby. Oh, my God. What a performance. I mean, really, what a performance. When you see a performance like this, this was a performance that you would put on when he was playing at Ohio State and they were taking on Iowa or something. I mean, to throw for five touchdown passes and 470 yards in the National Football League and then to lead this comeback was unbelievable. Houston has a quarterback, and C.J. Stroud already looks like the class of the bunch, and he even said before this drive, give me the football, let, let me win this game for us. And that's exactly what he did. And if you listen to the guys in that locker room, you don't necessarily get that benefit of the doubt if you play in the NFL, particularly if you're a rookie quarterback. To a man, every person in that Texas locker room has been saying for a few weeks now, oh, CJ's the guy. This guy's a hell of a quarterback. He's a hell of a leader. He's our guy. He showed it yesterday. This guy's going to be an absolute star. CJ Stroud, MVP. CJ Stroud's definitely a great one, but maybe I'm going to throw out a name there that we haven't mentioned just yet. Can we give some love to Josh Dobbs, quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings? Yes, the Vikings now. He was on the Cardinals. He was on the Steelers. He was on the Titans. But now he is leading game-winning drives for the Minnesota Vikings. He just got there. He was thrown into the mix after Jaron Hall got a concussion because Kirk Cousins tore his ACL. So now the Vikings are on their backup, backup quarterback. The expectations were not high for Josh Dobbs. We're not talking about a first-round quarterback. We're talking about a guy that was drafted in 2017 by the Steelers and had to wait five years to make a start in the NFL. All he did was go 20 of 30, two touchdowns, and hit the game-winning touchdown with 22 seconds left on the clock for a comeback win for the Vikings, 31 to 28 over the Falcons. Yes, it's not a lot to play for for the Vikings, But I feel like Josh Dobbs deserves some credit, so I'll give it to him. Josh Dobbs, my MVP of this Monday.